Hello everyone. I am so happy to see you again. Today is going to be one of those blissful domestic chores days. I need to clean the music room. I need to iron napkins. I want to buy some flowers to arrange for the music room. But before we do anything, I need to prepare some vegetables. So these are the red onions that you and I planted together last spring and then harvested in the fall. As you can see, some of them have already started to sprout. That's not a terrible thing, but I really want to preserve the bulk of these red onions. So I'm going to mince most of them and then freeze them. Onions freeze perfectly well. I've already used a lot of the onions that we harvested together, but I still have a good 50 to 70 onions remaining. I will use my food processor to mince the onions. Now, red onions are good storage onions, but you need to keep them at a cool temperature. And I don't really have a perfect location for storing them that way, so I'm better off freezing them. It takes a bit of work to peel 50 to 70 onions, but I don't mind the job. It's just another domestic chore. So here are the onions I'm going to process today. Now, I still have some rather small red onions over here, but I'm going to try to use those fresh. There's one onion that I need to cut into half moons because I'm going to use it on a colorful vegetable tart that you and I are going to fix later today. Now you can save the onion peels either for vegetable stock or you could boil them and use them as a red or purple dye for Easter eggs. I'm going to bring this to my compost. Now I have never minced onions in a food processor before, but apparently it can be done. The trick is to pulse the machine rather than just let it run. Let's start with a small amount. I think this worked out perfectly. I cannot believe what a nice job the pulse feature on this food processor did for these onions. I mean, they truly are minced. So let's keep going. So I have concluded that the food processor does a magnificent job if you want a super fine mince, but if you want just coarsely minced or chopped onions, probably better to do them by knife, which I'm going to do right now. Of course, I want a very sharp knife for this job, so I'm using my little wonderful knife sharpener here. It works a charm. I can link this in the description below if you are interested. This is sharp. I'm going to rinse off my knife. I suppose if you get bored dicing onions, you could also use one of these little gadgets. This thing actually works very well. These are the super fine onions. I'm 
going to arrange these onions so they lay flat in the freezer bag. Then they will take up less room in the freezer. I think my knife and this little gadget made the very best diced onions. If they still make this gadget, I will link it in the description below. Now when I need onion for a soup or a stew or for an omelet, I can just pull one of these bags out of the freezer, reach my hand in and grab whatever I need. Very convenient to have onions in the freezer. Earlier I mentioned that we are going to make a colorful vegetable tart for lunch today. And the other vegetables besides onion are broccoli florets. So I'm going to cut into fairly small pieces. And then I will need a diced or chopped red bell pepper. Now I'm going to throw all of these vegetables onto a baking sheet. And my oven is preheating to 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius. So we are going to roast these veggies. A little olive oil. Salt. Pepper. And toss. The oil will help the vegetables to caramelize in the oven. I'm going to roast these just until they begin to color. That's going to take probably 15 minutes. I'm going to clean up my workstation and then we can set up the ironing board and heat up the iron and tackle those dinner napkins. These are freshly laundered napkins. These particular napkins are considered tea napkins because they are small. And again, I really do not mind ironing napkins. I approach it with a zen-like attitude. We host a lot of dinner parties here, so it's great to know that my napkins are laundered, ironed, and ready for use. These are cloth cocktail napkins, although I sometimes use them also for tea napkins. And I could certainly use a lot more cocktail napkins because besides hosting a lot of dinner parties, we also host a lot of cocktail parties usually just for a total of four people. I think meeting friends for drinks and nibbles is one of the best ways to entertain friends. If you have seen beautiful cloth napkins on Amazon or at some other outlet, please let me know. Again, I want to increase my collection of them. I need to put my ironing board 
and iron and all of these napkins away, and then we can get started cleaning the music room. When I clean, I always start at the highest point in the room and then work my way down. I can link all of my cleaning equipment in the description below if you are interested. To clean the highly polished surface of the Yamaha Grand, I use only a microfiber cloth that is barely dampened with water. I use only a dry microfiber cloth to dust the ebony finish on the Steinway Grand. I'm going to call this music room clean. Now I want to find some flowers to arrange for the table in the room. So please take a short drive with me. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done. Oh, the good times just begun. Hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy But things are finally right With you and I The future is bright oh, you and I. Thank you. 
There are many beautiful blooms from which to choose at this flower shop. I think these pink roses will look well in the music room. We are home again. Here are the flowers we bought. Now I just need to run out to the garden to grab some greens. Take a short walk with me. Eight roses, some free greens from the garden. Let's bring this into the music room. I don't know about you, but at this point, I'm rather hungry for my simple late lunch. We're going to assemble the little tart that I mentioned earlier. So I have a sheet of store-bought puff pastry here. And I want to roll this out just to make it a little longer than it is. I have a recipe for this vegetable tart on my website, which I can link below. But I think today's tart will be mostly an improvisation. So I have a roughly 12 inch by 10 inch rectangle here. I need to transfer this pastry to a parchment lined baking sheet. But before I do, I'm going to sprinkle some grated Swiss cheese, or rather shredded Swiss cheese, that is approximately the same dimensions as the pastry. This is just going to add a little more flavor. And I put the dough right on top of the cheese. Next comes a mascarpone topping that we are going to put on the pastry. And this mascarpone mixture will hold the vegetables in place. To the egg, I'm adding oh, two or three tablespoons of either grated Parmesan or you could use Asiago cheese a pinch of salt, not too much because the Parmesan is already salty, grinds of black pepper, and if you want it, some garlic powder. Whisk. Now I'm adding eight ounces or 226 grams of mascarpone. You should be able to find mascarpone in just about any supermarket. And just whisk until the mixture turns fairly smooth. Now set this aside for a moment. Grab the pastry, and then I'm going to score a border on the pastry. So I'm coming in about three quarters of an inch from the edge, and I'm just lightly pressing a line. In other words, I'm not actually cutting through the pastry. When you score the pastry like this, the outside edge will puff up higher than the middle does. 
spoon the mascarpone mixture onto the pastry, staying within the lines. I'm going to use my offset spatula for this. Then top the mascarpone with the gorgeous vegetables that we roasted earlier. And I only roasted them lightly the first time because they're going to roast again. And my oven is preheated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees Celsius. The reason we par roasted the vegetables was to relieve them of some of their moisture. Otherwise, the vegetables would be too wet and they would create a soggy crust. Now I want to add some fresh thyme leaves. You could use dried here. This is the thyme that we bought at the berry farm. They actually grow it in greenhouses all winter long. This goes into the preheated oven until the pastry browns and puffs and the mascarpone is cooked through. That will take about 25 minutes. And here's our beautiful vegetable tart. I'm going to try to slide under this wire rack. There we go. I need this to cool for about five minutes before we can cut into it. Meantime, let's go light a fire in the dining room fireplace. to slide this onto a board just for easy slicing. I also want to garnish this with some baby arugula leaves. As you can see, the sides rose up beautifully. I just need to cut this into squares. Well, I think this will make a chic little lunch or very early dinner. Let's head into the dining room. This is the kind of casual meal that requires neither fork nor knife. Bon appétit. All I can say is, wow, the flavors of this thing are incredible. The broccoli, the red bell pepper, the red onion, the garlic powder, the mascarpone layer, the incredibly light and flaky puff pastry. This is downright heavenly. Well, we certainly accomplished a lot today. And honestly, I could not have done my domestic chores without you. Just knowing you were here watching gave me the, all the energy I needed to complete all of those tasks. I hope you will give this perfect little vegetable tart a try someday. I can put a couple of my other videos up here or up here that you can watch between now and my next upload. In the meantime, take very good care of yourself and I will see you in the next video. Bon appétit.